Hello and welcome to Faith Talks. In today's program, we'll be discussing the balance of good and evil. Joining me in the studio and ready to share their views and comments are Patrick Johnson, a pastor here in England, and Tom De Bruyne, a pastor and a church leader in Holland. Welcome to both of you. When we're looking at the good and evil, you've got to go straight to Hollywood because that seems to be the theme of every media output is a fight between good and evil. Is that something that resonates within our theology as well or in our worldview, the whole balance of good and evil? Well, I think you're mentioning something that uh, um, perhaps resonates within the human heart in general. That's why it's in in Hollywood. Uh, So many films that come out and it is uh, the fight between good and evil. Um, And it's interesting to note that good normally wins. Um, because we want good to to succeed. So um, it is uh, a general view within the whole of humanity that there is some kind of battle going on. And no matter what happens, good is always you. (laughs) We're always on the side of good, you know, that's, 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 so, I mean, it's not, it's also that you want um, your team to win. So, and then we generally like to associate ourselves with, with good and, uh, Yes, that's uh, important. But when we bring it into a Christian faith setting, um, many Christian churches will also believe there is a larger good and evil balance in the world. How would you explain that? Well, I think I think it's quite a quite a quite a simple um, thing to explain. Um, the Christian worldview um, revolves around the idea that. Um, this world as we have it now is not a good place but an evil place and this place that we live in now is evil because evil has been introduced into the world by the commander of evil as we could call him um, Satan um, wh- Satan while starting off good re- refused to follow his his leader God and turned towards the size of e- side of evil and brought us along um, into and introduced evil into this world um, the whole plan that the Lord has is that at some time in the future, on the on Judgment Day, He will vindicate the people on earth who follow Him and will recreate in a good way and, and thus remove evil from everything. So the good news is good will win and evil will. End. And we always like to see that, at, yes. at, you know, when we go into the movie, we want to know or, or to, uh, to a production, we want to know that good is going to win because... Why else see it? (laughs) (laughs) But when it comes to our life and you're talking about the good and evil being there being a larger battle um, that evil was introduced into this world and good is going to win in the end. But what is going on in between? Why is God even involved in something like this? Well, you know, taking a biblical perspective on it, um, one of the things that the Bible seems to teach us is that... um, uh, God created uh, us with uh, free will, <clears throat> and all his creatures have free will. Um, and for that to happen, there must be then the choice to be able to do the opposite of what God wants. And that's how evil comes in. Uh, so the potential for evil has always been there because God has created us with the ability to choose the opposite of him. But is there an over-focus on evil in our society today, do you think? I think every generation will hear that this world is more evil than it ever has been. Is there any truth in that from the biblical perspective? Well, I mean, one thing that we see is that, that um, in, in, in modern media, Satan is obviously very cool. Um, he's portrayed in a way, kind of the rebel. He's not, not very, very evil, but he's just evil enough that, 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 that you can be, feel attracted to him. That's, that's something I notice. Um, very strongly that that um, while God is kind of uninteresting in in media, mm-hmm. he is he's often not discussed, or if he's discussed, it's it's in a very boring way, which is strange because he is the ultimate good, and then the ultimate evil is often portrayed in a way that is actually quite quite attractive, and and they they hide the really really bad parts. Why do you think that is? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, <laughs> I'm not too sure, you know, because based on what Tom just said now, um, if it's true that God created us with the the uh, ability to choose, yeah, um, often the way in which evil is per, uh, portrayed, it's it's well, I should be able to choose, 
Uh, if you think about it, it, it is that way. And God is the one who is very stuck with, with the laws and he's very rigid and square and all the rest of it, where it's actually the opposite way around. Um, why that's portrayed that way, I'm not too sure, I, I got to admit. But if we take it in, you know, if we take it kind of into a larger scale, we can talk about the battle for each person, but we can also mm -hmm. talk about that if there is this battle between good and evil, where is that happening and what is going on on a larger cosmic scale? Well, cosmic is obviously very far away from us, um, but cosmically um, the, the battle would be about allegiance of each person. Um, God would love it if each and every person would choose to follow him. And I imagine that it's Satan's goal to try to get as few people to make that choice as possible. Um, that is how the battle is taking place. So it's not, even though it seems like it's far away in, in, in some cosmic uh, scale, it's actually taking pl place in every single room, in every single moment, where there is a choice of every person between good and evil, and that is the battle. And, but, and I think that that, that is the, the, the Christian's way of, of uh, making sense of life here on Earth, if you think about it. Why... Why um, does bad? Why do bad things happen? Um, you know, and, and we try to make sense of it in some way. And for Christians, there is this, if you want, overarching big story. Well, um, what you see here is uh, the consequences of a bigger war, a, a bigger battle, um, and and that helps. I'm not saying it, it always, you know, makes things so much easier, but it helps to put things into a bit of a bigger perspective. Um, so those things that happen to us down here are part of the, this, there's a bigger thing going on behind the scenes. And, and it, it even goes further than why does bad things happen to good people, but it's also about why do good people do bad things? Mm. Um, why do I, as someone who wants to live my life as well and as properly as, per, as possible, still feel the need and the desire to do things that, are, that I know are evil? Why, does that, why is that inside of me? And that is a very fundamental question about humanity itself that the Bible answers in that way, in that we are living in this, in this sinful world where we as people are sinful and we have this, this evil yeah. is part of our creation. Yeah. I like that thought that, you know, that even bringing out why do I as a seemingly good person still want to do bad or stupid mm -hmm. things that I know are bad and stupid because not many of us would define ourselves as doing evil things. That's kind of a little bit extreme. <laughs> I, I'm just speaking for myself. I, I, I don't like to say <laughs> that I'm doing evil things, but I'm sure people will perceive some of the things that we do as evil or, you know, nasty or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. but, but you're talking also about that God on some level and Satan on some levels are battling it out over us. So to get our yes for either mm -hmm. side, Tom, but does that not mean that God is like a puppeteer where he's caught pulling the strings or Satan is pulling the strings and, and we're just, as somebody would say, pawns in a chess game? Yeah, you see, I, I, I don't have, um, I would not agree with, the, with the, the statement that Satan is, um, or God is pulling our strings. Um, I do not think um, every time I get an evil thought while well, Satan's whispering in my ear. I, I think it's much more of a, as, as, as Paul would put it, um, the, 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 the mind is strong but the body is weak. That we have a certain kind of nature inside of us that leads us towards evil. Um, not that every time you think something evil, Satan's sitting on your shoulder whispering in your ear and the angels on the other side whispering in your other ear. I don't think that's correct. I think, I think the way of seeing it is that God has put everything in place in, a way, in this way on earth that we have an aptitude towards good but also an aptitude towards evil. And the challenge for us is to try to choose the good way as often as possible. And I wouldn't say that demons or Satan or any of that is, is actively trying to change us or puppeteer us, neither God nor the angel or, or Satan. Hmm. And, you know, I guess in some sense uh, th there is this... Um, um, at the moment, in, in particular, if you look on the television, there are lots of programs trying to th think there's more between heaven and earth than we realize. Yeah, um, The influences of, you know, whatever it is, ghosts and spirits and all the rest of it, it's out there somewhere. So there is this sense 
there is more than just what I do here and now. The, there are influences out there that we, we can't always grasp. Um, and and um, how much they, they play in on our everyday lives, we're not too sure. But the, the Christian perspective is there is that influence. There's no doubt about it. Um, uh, and that's what gives, gives us that large perspective on what's happening in life. You mentioned a little bit earlier, and I don't want us to go too much into depth uh, with suffering, uh, because this is not today's topic, but you also talked about when, when bad things just happen to good people. Can you expand a little bit on that in light of when, what Tom was saying, that good people do bad things? So yeah. just to balance that up. I, I would just say bad things happen. Uh, it's not just to good people. It just happens <laughs> across the board. Um, and uh, why should that be? You know, anybody would think, well, why, why should this happen to me? Um, anybody who's been through any kind of trauma, you're thinking, well, why me? Why, why now? And those are the questions we ask. Um, and, of course, we come to the conclusion we're living in a world that isn't perfect, that isn't good um, thoroughly. There, there is evil as well, um, and that helps us to, to come to grips with, with uh, some of the things that happen. Yeah, but the, the, then, then I would... I would. I think that it's uh, it's it's theologically dangerous to then assume that because you're sick, um, this happened because say Satan made you sick or because God allowed you to get sick. Um, what I've noticed in 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 my pastoral setting with people is people who have that worldview where where God and Satan are so involved in everything you do, that um, then they get very disappointed in faith. Um, that leads to questions like, well, now I'm sick. Why did God allow this? And um, that disappoints people in faith. And I think the answer is not why did God allow it, but that the whole question is, is incorrect. It's not so much that God is allowing you specifically to get sick, but that we live in a world where, unfortunately, bad things happen. People get sick. And it's not because Satan inflict, inflicted flu on you or whatever. It's um, that it's, it's, it's just here. But isn't it unfair in a way from God or by God to actually... Sin was introduced into this world at cre just after creation. Isn't it kind of evil of God to let us humanity suffer for so many thousands of years when he could immediately have cleared the question, sorted it out and uh, won the battle straight there and then? Why continue this dragged out suffering of humanity? I think it depends on what, what that original question was. Um... If that original question was, can you trust God? Yeah, how would he wipe out evil? He would, let's say, um, annihilate his enemy. Um, now think about um, countries in the world where um, you have dictatorships and you have um, someone from the opposition trying to say, well, you know, I don't think you can trust this guy completely. Uh, there are things that aren't so good, etc." And suddenly the opposition leader has disappeared. What do you think about what's happened to him? Yeah? The questions will stay in your mind. You will keep thinking, well, yeah, maybe there was something right about what he said. Um, you know, the, the, that dictator cannot tolerate somebody else saying a different way. I think in the same way, it's, it's kind of that way with, with this whole question between God and, and, uh, and Satan. And that, uh, that, that's the insinuation you know, you can't trust God, etc. So how do you prove that? You've got to let things kind of play out. I know it's not the nicest thing to think about, but otherwise there will always be questions. Maybe he was right. God couldn't tolerate him being around. Yeah. There's, a, there's also, um, um, building on that, the, the idea that um, obviously Satan chose against God, and if he is destroyed right up the beginning when he made that choice, he doesn't get the, get the chance to recount his own actions, mm. that he might change his mind. Um, that is not something that, that, that um, seems very likely maybe, but um, it's also unfair of God not to give him that chance to say, well, you've made this choice and then there you go, goodbye. Um, you, it's fairer to give someone the chance and also the angels that followed him that we now see as the demons um, to give those, them, those creations, also the chance to see what is the consequences of their choices and maybe also have time. I get that, but I still question because mm -hmm. if God is going to destroy 
as the Bible tells, uh, the devil and all the followers at the, at the end of Judgment mm-hmm. Day and all of that. Does that really matter? Because all those who are still with God are staying with God because they know he's good. So is that not just prolonging a punishment? Well, it's, it's also about um, us. Um, for example, Judgment com- Day comes around and, and, and the three of us um, are, are vindicated, are saved. Um, we then have seen with our own eyes what the consequences are of not following the Lord. Um, and that is very important because we, we've experienced the, the horror that is sin, the, the sickness, the pain, the, world, the wars, the murder. Mm. And um, we know why it's good to, to listen to the Lord and not to follow our own opinions or our own thoughts. So, and I think if we didn't have that, we might be more likely to make the same choice that Satan made all those millennia ago. And then it would start all over again. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I think <clears throat> that's the only way you're going to deal with it once and for all to allow it to run its course. And then, yeah, everybody would have seen this is what happens as a result of choosing the opposite way of what God says. Yeah. In, in his example, if you kill one rebel leader, another rebel leader will stand up mm. until you let them see that the, the rebel is wrong. Yeah. But how does that actually make a difference in my personal life? As a Christian, what difference does it make that there is this big war going on? I think one thing it does, it, it, gives, um, it gives me a perspective on what's happening uh, for me today, why um, things are the way they are in the world. Why, why, why hasn't God just ended all this stuff and given us back uh, um, uh, paradise? Um, part of a bigger story. So, so for me, it gives me that, uh, first of all, just to hang some, some questions on, and uh, um, that helps me in my day-to-day to have a, an overarching story to, to human life. Yeah, and the other, the other thing that, it, that, that I find personally very helpful is that the idea that um, the, the war, I mean, if we leave out the sickness and the murder and the, all the bad things in this world, and we ignore everything, there's still me, and my desires that are sometimes towards good things and sometimes towards not good things. And this whole idea of a struggle between good and evil, by internalizing it for myself, helps me lead a better life and also understand myself better. Um, Why do I sometimes have these thoughts that are not Christian? And how can I deal with them? And do I have to feel guilty about having the thoughts or do is that just part of, of how I am and who I am? And can I be thankful that the Lord helps me not act on the thoughts? And be, can I be thankful for the Lord that he gives me the, re, the, 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 the peace to deal with them? I think one more thing as well, just as a personal thing, is that there will be an end. Yeah. This thing is not just going to continue on and on and on and on and on. It's not like it's some random... Uh, thing that uh, yeah, whatever will happen in a million years, it's just going to continue on and on. That there there will be an end to evil as well. Uh, yeah. That that for me is part of the good news of this this whole story uh, of the battle between good and evil. That good will actually triumph, and that that's the end. There is hope. Yeah, yeah. There is hope that good will win. I mean, mm-hmm. we've been told that uh, God tells us that. At the same time, you know, we started a little bit talking about the media's portrayal of, of God as a, as a bit of a wuss, as a bit of a boring person and the devil being the cool guy, you know. How do we actually talk about this great controversy, this great battle between good and evil on, on a larger plane and in our personal plane without making evil be cool and good be boring? Well, I think what what Patrick said about the choice is very, very interesting, is that um, I think most people will agree that having free choice, being allowed to do what you think is best, that that is a fundamental right that we should all have. Um, And that is a right that God gives us and that, in fact, Satan kind of wants to take away because he he talks about giving you the choice, but he wants to give you the choice so that you choose him. And that is always that has always been his ploy. and so, so the, the idea that, that God gives choices, that God allows you to go where you want to go, and God gives you the freedom, guidance, but the freedom to go where you want to go, I think that is something that is very, very interesting for, for many people. 
Yeah, it's, and, and you see that so often in the Bible, um, often those stories of demon possession. If you notice, um, whatever that is, uh, to be possessed by the evil one, that person is never enjoying life. If you think about it, their, their life is always terrible. Yeah. Um, there's a one story of, you know, Jesus meets this demon-possessed man and, and uh, um, he's got a legion within him. So, who knows, maybe several thousand um, uh, demons within him. And, and he had a terrible life. He was ripping off his clothes. He was living among the tombs. So, to be totally possessed by evil is not a good thing. Yeah? And then, um, of course, Jesus... Um, uh, releases this man from, from, from this kind of slavery and they ask the demons um, allow us to go into the pigs then so permission is granted yeah, they're, they're allowed to do that what do they do? did they do something good? no <laughs> they go kill all the pigs evil is always yeah, it forces you um, to do what it wants and it's never anything good Whereas Jesus is, and God's side is always about giving the choices. It's always a good choice, well, I mean, generally. Um, and and uh, God wants the best for you. And that plays out so, so often, uh, the thing we see there. You're talking about choices, and both of you have been very articulate about talking about choosing between good and bad and choosing God over uh, the devil. But in the society we're living in today, one of the fundamental prevailing thoughts is that I can kind of choose a little bit of everything, that I don't really have to put my foot down and say, this is where I go. I, I, I don't think that, that that goes against what I was saying in any way. Um, the, I think, in fact, the, the, Satan wants you, would not want you to choose good and then evil and then good and then evil. That is something that wouldn't fit in because he wants, as, as the demon-possessed man is a good example, once you're possessed, you can't choose anything except for evil. Exactly. Um, and that is ultimately Satan's goal, that you choose so that you never choose good. Um, looking at my life, I've made very good choices. I've made some very bad choices. And I'm not proud of the bad ones, but they're part of who I am. And they also brought me to where I am in life. They formed me. I learned from them. And I think ultimately, looking back, the bad choices were part of God's plan for my life because they made me who I am. So I think this a little bit of this, a little bit of that, I don't think God has big problems with that because God has the power to use good or bad choices to bring you, you can turn to, around, into him. Mm. And then at the same time, when we look back at our church history as Christians, knowing that there is a larger battle, knowing that what we're talking about today, it's nothing new, it's, it's a very biblical concept. Mm -hmm. We wage wars as Christians against everybody else, and we seem to be actually be the face of evil at some times. We always like to say we are the good and everybody else is evil. Yeah. <laughs> we see that in the war of what's called terrorism today, and other denominations are being demonized, if you can say that, and we want to look good ourselves. But the reality is that Christians war, you know, we wage wars against other Christians. Mm -hmm. We, within a denomination, rage war perhaps not with weapons of, of, of destructions, but with words of destructions, we are raging war against each other. What is that about? I mean, how does that fit into the whole thought of a great controversy? I guess that, that is the, <laughs> the challenge of having that kind of worldview, first of all, and thinking, okay, I am now a soldier of Christ, <laughs> and I've got to go on crusades to convert everybody to, to the same um, belief as me. And that, again, I think is missing the point of what we've been talking about, um, having choice, um, being forced to say, you must choose the good. God doesn't even do that. Um, he still, you know, choose which way you want. Um, our problem is that we want people to do what we think is best. Um, and, and it's natural. You know, if you see someone hurting themselves, you, you would want to say, come on now, do this. Um, and yet... Can you do that with another person? That's really against the, the whole ethos of the, the Christian story. Um, uh, Jesus coming and, and, and uh, dying for us and saying, choose which way you want to go. Um, yeah, forcing people is not the way um, to, to rage to, in, in which you do this battle anyway. And, and battle is just not part of Christian, Christian ethics. Mm. Um, attacking violence 
um, it's, it's, uh, we've come to accept it more and more through the years of Christianity. But when you look in the beginning, uh, Christians were pacifists. And we grew from that to you can, you can fight to defend yourself and then you can fight to preemptively defend yourself. Mm -hmm. So attack them because they're going to attack you. Mm -hmm. And we've, I think we've lost the vision of, of, of true love for your, for your neighbor, even if they are not acting like your neighbor. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've lost that vision through, through the decades, through the years. Yeah. So we went back and started with, with media portrayal of, of good and evil, and you're both saying, well, good always wins in the movies. Um, how do we know good is always going to win? How do we know that good will win, that God will win eventually in this battlefront between good and evil? You know, we, we're told in the Bible, well, Jesus actually says it. Um, uh, now uh, the prince of this world is cast out. When I'm lifted up, when, I'm, when he dies on the cross, that really is the definitive end of the cosmic battle, if you like. Um, the, the, because he died for us, he changed the course of history. And that means, yes, God is going to win because now we know the full consequences of evil. It is death. Um, and, um, and so that's the confidence, I think, of the Christian that uh, because Jesus died, um, um, we know good is going to win. It's even stronger that good has already won. Well, indeed, um, yes. And um, I, I, I like to give the example of a football match, um, and usually it's Holland-Britain, but I'll take Holland something else this time. <laughs> um, and and it's, it's almost the end of time. It's in the 89th minute, and Holland is 120 goals ahead of Germany. We all dream of this in Holland, right? <laughs> Holland has won. We just need to wait for that final. We need to run through the injury time and wait for that whistle, and that's what we're sitting in now. We're sitting in the, the injury time of the struggle between good and evil. Jesus rose from the dead and has won that's already. Right. We just need to wait till the referee thinks, well, now the game has run its course. Well, I want to thank both of you for a very enlightening discussion here today. And why not add your voice to the debate by joining us on our Facebook page at Faith Talks. We'd love to hear from you. And thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.